There we go. We are away. Buona notte, benessere, Stefano. How are you? Ciao, Rey, sto molto bene. Te come stai? Sì, bene. Eh, pochi, eh, sono, what is it? Stanza, no? Stanzo? Stanco. Uh, Stanco. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. No complaints. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, I will explain as, as more people come in, but uh, just while we're waiting for people to come in, um, you must be very busy in the middle of harvest at this time. So first of all, thank you for giving your time to us. But have you been all over Italy today or at least all over Tuscany? Not today, but in the last 10 days all over Italy, actually, yes. So good evening, everybody. So it's a pleasure to be here, even if we in, in the harvest. Uh, today, no, today I've been in Tuscany, only in Tuscany. So this morning I was near Arezzo and in the afternoon I've been near Siena. So just not, not too far from my house. But last week I was in, I was in, I've been in Abruzzo the week before for the harvest of the whites in Veneto. And then next week we'll go to Sicily because we are starting there as well. So part of the whites has been done. So we are going little by little towards the middle part of the harvest. Lovely. Good. That's, that's good to hear. I mean, wouldn't all of us, any of us, wish to be able to be near Siena today? What an absolute treat. I know it's a different type of work. It is work. but uh, <laughs> uh, Well, I, a good number of people have joined us already, so I will say welcome to everyone. And um, Sebastian San Martin from Argentina was supposed to be joining us. He rang me 15 minutes ago uh, to say, unfortunately, a colleague of his who he works with had an accident in the winery, uh, cut his finger, but it's, 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 it's not massively serious, but it's important enough that Sebastian stays with him and gives him the care. And I think he's made the right decision there. So um, we're thinking of Sebastian and we're thinking of his colleague and Sure, myself and Stefano could talk the hind legs off any old thing. So we will bring you through everything you want to hear and ask as well about sustainability this evening. So we will, um, yeah, we'll kick off. Everyone, please, as you have already been doing, let us know uh, where you are and what you're drinking in the chat room. And then we will have a QA. and a um, You can put that, you see at the bottom of your screen there on Zoom, that we'll take questions and Stefano or I will be able to answer those towards the end of the session. So I thought, well, let me introduce Stefano again. Well, you all know Stefano, but just remind everyone, Stefano is our winemaker of the year, 2020 winemaker of the year and uh, duly deserved and uh, salute. And... Um, so we asked, we were talking, it was uh, James, the, the, the skipper, the MD, JC, and I were speaking to Stefano, and we were, what, what could you do to turn the dial in terms of doing your contribution to the planet? And so when you were thinking about which wine to make, when you win Winemaker of the Year, you can make any wine you want, and yours you chose to do a project around sustainability in the vineyard. So Stefano, we will hear about that. In, in, in not too much time now. First of all, I think, can we just have a quick drink of wine because it's Thursday, it's eight o'clock, it's been a tough week. And so let's have a, a taste of your wine, which it has been in the mixed case, uh, which if anyone bought the case for the September festival, it is Stefano de Basi Bianco, Leggermente Appassite. You're on the same. Da uve leggermente appassite, means made, made with slightly dried grapes. Thank you for the correction of pronunciation. I'll get scolded by my Italian teacher. Uh, we got it. So um, first of all, just to, to, to paint the picture, we will take a quick look at where this is from in Italy, and then we'll talk about how it's made and what it tastes like. And then we'll jump straight back into the sustainability project. But first of all, a drink, I think. So let me share my screen and you can direct me. There we go. Boom, boom, boink. So we are in yes. Sicily. Uh, right. Just to, to show where we are. So go between Sciacca and Mazzaro del Vallo. Okay, one second. So first of all, maybe stop here. Just, just, just understand where Sicily is uh, aligned to Tunis. You see, we are more or less to the same latitude as Tunis. Yeah. So re really, really down south Italy. Yeah. Yeah, then, then Sciacca. 
Okay, so, so there we are. Right. Julius, and then into, yeah, Shaka. So I'm going to uh, west, is that right? Zoom is in, exactly, yes, on, on the road. Okay, take me, Kate. Sambuca di Sicilia is not far from there. Okay. So, so on the west can coast. You see, there is Cor Leone, very famous for the mafia. <laughs> Poggio Reale and this little lake. So next to Poggio Reale. Okay. On on the on on the left. On the left, yeah. Very good. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, where are we now? So in general, uh, you have some coastal influence, or it's 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 mainly yeah yeah of course we are not uh, not far than forty kilometers from the coast, so there is a very nice breeze. So th there is this uh, lake here, Sambuca di Sicilia. So it's slightly on the north. But go go left. Okay. Go left. Good. I'm sure everyone's getting travel sickness watching us travel across here, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think for the benefit of, of the viewers, we will say we, we've got the general area where we are sort exactly. of... Uh, is where. Right. What, what okay. I wanted to show... Okay, stop here, stop here. Mm -hmm. It's where it's written Poggio Reale. Okay. Poggio Reale, so... Yeah. yeah. Let's say, you know, yes, go on, on left, left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah up there. Up ah, here there. we go. Exactly, yeah. exactly, there. exactly right. there. Poggio Reale, yeah. this, this uh, light... Uh, Gotcha, this is the area. It's, okay. it's, uh, uh, Sala Paruta. Very good. So, yeah, you see, you yeah. see the, 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 we, the, the, the sea is not far. It's mm -hmm. about 40 kilometers. Perfect. And uh, what is important in this place is that you, get, you really get the warmth from the north of Africa. Mm. So especially when you have the south winds, uh, you really get the warmth of the desert, which is not really far. So it's... it's uh, it's just a matter of few hours and the wind will blow from the, from the desert to the coast of Sicily. And this gives us an incredible opportunity that is one of the uh, base of the success of this wine of the Bianco Leggermente, da Uve Leggermente Appassite, is that because of this wind, because of this dry uh, wind, we can have a slightly drying of the grapes on the vines. Mm. So this is a blend made of four different varieties. It's Chardonnay, Viognier, Cataratto, which is a local variety. The first two you know because they are you know, international varieties. And they're Zibibo. Zibibo, it's a sort of muscat. Don't say it to a Sicilian because they will kill you. They say it's again a different uh, variety that is grown and is typical there, but just to, to have our angel to understand it's similar to a, to a muscat. Mm -hmm. And when you, when, with this wind, when you really can dry the grapes on the vines, uh, then you concentrate all the flavors, all the freshness. So what is incredible of this wine, if you have it with you now and our angels can taste it with me, yeah. is that despite this incredible uh, tropical flavor, there is a lot of um, guava of passion fruit, you would expect almost a, a, a sweet wine with a bit of residual sugar. And when you, when you drink it, you, you immediately understand there's a lot of freshness, a lot of acidity. And this is given by the catarrato, which is a local variety that really keeps during the ripening a lot of acidity and then giving the wine an incredible freshness and crispiness. So I think the base of the success of this wine is this two contrasting element. One, the tropical ripe nose, and then this clean, fresh acidity. And for me, this is exactly reflecting what Sicily is in my, in my view. My family comes from Sicily. Di Blas is a typical name from Sicily, even though I've not grown there, I was born in Florence, but I, I understand the, the mood, say, uh, the, 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 of the people there. And it's so rich and, and colorful, you know, like a bit like this wine. So really sunny, really uh, expressive. So I think, I think it's a nice wine to give to, to our angels, you know, to, so that they can explore 
the extension of the wines that can be made in Italy now, starting from the north to the south. Absolutely. No, you're right. It is. It's dry, but it's just um, fruit salad, very exotic. Lots of guava is a good descriptor, as you say, but so fresh and crisp. And this is the 2020. If you're looking on the site now, I think it should go live, let's say, by Monday next week. So you'll you'll be a, uh, you'll have a chance to, to pick it up. But it's it's absolutely delicious. It's a little bit it's dangerously easy to drink, you know, and <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know. Does it need a food pairing, this wine, because it has got so much character in itself. So it's maybe just one at the end of the day to have a nice cold glass of wine. But you know what, I, I also like to recommend this wine or with maybe some, some spicy food also. And I think you know, in in UK, you have some very nice spicy food. And um, if I should mention something typical from Sicily, I would mention a couscous that, you know, it's yeah. a from Maghreb wine, a uh, food and maybe with fish. So a fish couscous it can be done with lamb as well, you know, and sometimes a mix of the two. Yeah. Actually, my grandmother used to cook the best couscous ever eaten. Even <laughs> if I've traveled to Tunis and Morocco, it, the couscous from Sicily is considered to be one of the best. Ah, I wouldn't have thought that, lovely. And then when you put a bit of pomegranate through it or something like that for a nice, fresh sweetness. Well, thank you. Well, it's, it's good to sort of finish the day tasting a beautiful wine like this. But why don't we now talk a bit about um, sustainability? And it'd be good to get the views of everyone who's watching in terms of um, you know, sustainability covers many aspects. There's the environmental, which, which we will talk largely about tonight, economical, others about social and support, and, and then all the legal piece that goes around it. But I wonder if anyone can tell us, yeah, what are your environmental concerns around wine? So this is a topic, the discussion is on sustainability of which environmental is one of the contributors in, in that discussion. So what are your environmental concerns around wine? And the question is, is it packaging, waste, recyclability, carbon footprint, farming practices such as pesticides and fertilizers or something else? Can you pop it in the comments there and we can just continue. We keep an eye on the comment section there as well. So if you vote or tick a box there, that, that'd be great. And then as those results, we'll be able to share that on screen in a minute once everyone has uh, contributed. And anything that else you, you want to, to suggest in the comments, we uh, recently, May, I think, um, brought on a sustainability manager. So someone who specifically focusing on sustainability for naked wines. Uh, his name is Luke Landers. Uh, sounds like a Marvel character. He is indeed a marvelous character. And he is in the chat room this evening as well. So you can direct questions at him while Stefano and I are continuing to talk about other points. But um, yeah, so we are very, very much and have been for a very long time taking uh, sustainability and environmental matters very seriously at Naked Wines all from our own sort of personal background of what we want to do. And then with our responsibility, uh, especially as we grow and grow, we, we have a massive responsibility. So do I need to, there we go. I think any minute now, well, it's pretty close. Uh, so uh, I think out in front there is the farming practices, pesticides and fertilizers, which is opportune because Stefano, that's what you're going to talk to us about this evening. Uh, followed by packaging waste recyclability, which I will talk a little bit about, and uh, carbon footprint, I guess, is the sum of all things uh, under one umbrella, uh, which matters. And then the others, something else, uh, hopefully we're going to see that. I already see one coming in there um, on uh, soil health. So that, that, that we will discuss as we, as we go through in fair trade. Okay, and I think just before we kick off again further with Stefano, I just wanted to show everyone um, an internal study we did ourselves. Um, and we used an external company to do this internal study, Three Keel, and we these guys they've done sort of audits on uh, sustainability and environmental practices for companies like Innocent Drinks. So using fruit, it's all about fruit in, in Innocent Drinks, and then the plastic that they use and Tesco. And so it's we wanted someone that really understood our, as close as possible to the wine industry, but that, that wasn't directly already in it. So if I can share my screen, I can show you some of our results. So where do I have this one now? Uh, I might have to come back to this one. Let me see if I do that. If 
throw that up there. S share. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you are looking at it. Thank I you. was looking at the result of the survey already done and really surprised that such a high percentage was given to the use of pesticides and really mm -hmm. happy about that, that has been pointed out. Yeah. For it, me, it I, I would have bet that wasn't the first. Probably I would have said uh, carbon footprint uh, because now this is very, it's very, it sounds like, you uh, know, lot the the main thing no yeah but pesticides i think it's a very very nice result please i, I think you found yeah the... so well what i can do is just share with you in general because it's not coming up for some reason now but it is um we sort of split it down we rounded everything up and but it was more it's around you've got about 25 percent 20 to 25 percent 20 percent in the vineyard viticulture uh, another 20% or so in the production the, of the winemaking. Uh, you think about the energy required to chill a tank to make the cold white wines. 25% in glass um, and packaging and its weight. And then you go into other more smaller nuances around the transport, um, the warehouse piece, the finished goods like that. So it's an even split. But really one thing that stood out to us quite clearly was uh, glass and glass weight so I mean you was we love our bottles and how beautiful they are and the labels um their use is you know unless you're aging a wine for 20 years their use is quite short-lived given the amount of energy that's required so one last question for everyone I really appreciate your contribution so far already but if we were to think about glass and the importance of glass weight to to you as a as a consumer how important do you feel glass weight is in the whole experience of drinking wine? Would you be comfortable with a reduction in glass weight or um, does it does it form another uh, play another part in your experience? So there you have a, a poll up on the screen. So lighter bottle. So would you buy your favorite wine in a lighter bottle? Yes, the juice inside is exactly the same and it's kinder to the planet in a lighter bottle or nope, the look and feel of the bottle is all part of the wine experience. So this would just help us get an indication on, you know, to what extent we can crack on and reduce the weight in a number of our bottles. And we are already looking at this just this week. Um, so Luke and also my colleague Harriet. Um, caught up with uh, Rafa Dahan, Rafael Dahan. You remember Nur Rafa Nuria we rescued in the COVID rescue case last year, and they're in uh, Spain, and we've taken out a massive amount of CO2 from their glass bottles. We've already started to change their glass bottles, and, um, and we'll talk about boxed wine in a moment. So we should have the results pop up on the screen there, and it is largely 85% towards yeah, you would consider a lighter bottle. That's reassuring to know. And thank you for those who voted the other way, which says that it is a part of the feel of the experience. So perhaps if you're having a dinner party and you want to impress, and it's, it's, it's the quality of the bottle and the weight of the bottle that implies a level of quality. So I think there's a fine line. And while we will not throw the baby out with the bath water and, and, and remain, may, let's say, understand and appreciate the quality cues and virtues of a, of a heavier bottle by and large i think if it's an easy win for us to just slowly dial back the weight of some glass while still we're all about quality uh, stefano when we talk you know it, it is really pushing all our energy goes on pushing that element of of uh excellence and that's in the wine the glass gets it to you so we will we'll be continuing with that so why don't we then, Stefano, um, and please keep the chats coming in, in, in the chat room there. But Stefano, why don't you tell us a bit about the project? So you won Winemaker of the Year and what you wanted to do was make this project. Tell us about your project and what it involves and who it involves, please. Yeah, maybe maybe first just let me give a comment on the result of this, uh, of this last question you did. That again, I think we have a very... Um, high level angels and, 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 and people looking at us 
because again, you know, to easily answer that the, it's just a matter of the content is it, when it comes to wine is not, not as easy. And I would say probably the people listening to us because you now they probably know that we were that we were going to talk about sustainability. It's because now it's already in their mind. And so that's why I would expect um, again here a higher percentage of people uh, replying that uh, the glass also is important. So, but then at the end, I think as we go on with the, with the discussion on sustainability, it's not a matter of changing everything from one day to the other, but improving, you know, and keep improving. Uh, so yes, if we start to, uh, to do without that criminally heavy bottles, that would be a great start. And then you know, if we want to show them after you know, the, the project you have with, uh, without the glass uh, and the, the boxed wine, that would be another solution that is really interesting. Okay, that, that's, that's just what, is, what it clicked to my mind when I've seen the results. Going back to the research, uh, well, first of all, I always really need to thank you, our to thank you, Naked, and our angels, because you know I've been doing wines. Uh, this year is the twenty sixth <laughs> vintages, so for quite a long time, and um, I've been involved in research during my career on research in, in the wine business. And um, this is the first time, and thanks to the angel, thanks to the winemaker of the year recognition, that I, I was, I am able to uh, do something that I really feel important. So, so when I start thinking to make a research with the university on sustainability, uh, I, I, I didn't expect this was so important for me. And now I feel really happy and proud of it. Mm -hmm. And this is thanks to you. Proud because you know, for, for most of my career, I've been uh, involved in thinking how to make a better taste wine, a quality wine, having high scores on the, on the, on the magazines. But then at the end, uh, it's not just a matter of quality, you know, it's also a matter of how you produce that wine. So, so again, thank you for this opportunity. The research project uh, will start now in November. So we've been thinking the whole year, year how to uh, set up the protocols. And um, the, the, the project will be done together with Naked Wines, will be a very important partner of the research, the angels. Because the main important thing when you when you talk about sustainability is the engagement of people. It's sustainability cannot uh, go without a cultural change. Yeah. So it is really important to know what angel thinks, what they expect. Uh, so I, I'll be uh, interviewing with surveys angels. I've done once, the already once, the first and maybe later on we'll show some results. The University of Florence. So I think it is important to have, uh, uh, to have somebody that is over the interest in terms of economics or marketing that can really say uh, if what you are doing, it's, uh, it's solid or not at the end, if it works or not. And we need to have somebody that has the, scientific approach to really understand what you are doing. And this winery, the Casa dei Suvereto, uh, it's a winery I've been working uh, with for more than 10 years. And seven years ago, started this concept of agroecology. Agroecology, and then maybe I'll try to explain some of these terms. Let's say it's a, it's a winery that is organic certified is biodynamic certified by Demeter, but for them being organic or being biodynamic is, is not an end point, it's a starting point. So say they want to do something more, so they want to go really deep into what sustainability is. So with this opportunity I've had from Naked Wines, I thought, 
okay, I'll put all these uh, actors together and, and I'll try to understand at the end what, what is the question that I'm asking myself and then I'll try to answer to, to, to you and to the angels. The, 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 the real question is, uh, is a sustainable farming method possible in, in wine production? And, and then once I've, I've asked myself this question, and of course, everyone has to go through these steps and you already started to explain what sustainability is in this three bottom line, is what, what is the definition of sustainability? So, so and, and you will see if you read uh, hundreds of paper, then as you said already, there is an ecological environmental part, which for me is the first I think about because I'm an agronomist. So at the end, I think about the production and so the land we manage to produce our wine or food in general. But then of course the social aspect and the economical aspects are as important as. So this is the premise, let's say, the starting point of the project. And then as we go on with the, uh, with the project of the research, so how to, what, what to measure, it clicked to my mind that angels engagement uh, should be and must be uh, one of the starting points. Uh, for me, it, it is really fundamental to interact with the angels. I've learned a lot, even in the winemaking, you know, on the, on the post that, that they send us and you send us uh, on my wall, on the wine, on the winemaking, on, on something that I really think to know, or I, I, I think that after 25 years, uh, more or less I've focused, but on what is the expectation of sustainability, what sustainability should be, I really need to interact with the angels. So I'll be doing some surveys and maybe I'll maybe be a bit annoying for you if I post it too much, but uh, I was really impressed by the first that we've launched last week. So there has been really uh, hundreds of replies so that's fantastic. And, and for me, but not only for me, also for the university, it's important. Because at the end, uh, at the end, we should study and explain what uh, angel need to know. And then, of course, it's, it's a, it's a two, two direction interaction. So, of course, I have to do my side in trying to explain which are the threat, the risks in uh, managing a land and uh, making a production. So, so, of course, what is the most important part that I want to stress and I will repeat maybe this point again and again during this conversation. Um, I think what is really important is to remind the angels that there is a direct connection among agriculture, their food, their health, and the environment. So, so th this is the main part. So, and then after that angel can understand better how food system is working, then we can do something not just for our health, that is the food we eat, but also for the environment. So, so I think this is the main goal of this research project. Then the research project will last for 18 months. This so is at the University of Florence. Is that we, you, so we're funding, uh, Naked Wines is funding a, a, an academic to work for 18 months to look into the, the, the benefits or whether they exist or not of sustainable viticulture. Is that the project? Exactly. Exactly. And, and so during the, the, the next one and a half year, I'll be posting you images of what we are doing, what we are studying, to really bring you in depth into which are the difficulties in trying to understand if a 
farming method is working or, or, or not. So this, um, th this is the point exactly. And um, of course, environment is, is one point that is really important, but there are also the, um, the, social, uh, the social part. And the social part, the, I, I want also to, um, to show this part that in, uh, in Tuscany, especially Tuscany, but of most of the place where wine is produced are a wonderful landscape. So a landscape is something that is um, available for the community, for the community, the people that is living around the vineyard, but also for the tourism. So just think how important is wine tourism for a region like Tuscany. You know, you were mentioning before Siena, probably thinking about the Piazza and the Palio, but also if you think about Siena, you immediately have an image of a wonderful landscape with cypress trees and, uh, and vineyards. No? And uh, so we have to thank the people who has lived in Tuscany before us, because this landscape is like this. And the creation of, of the landscape is not just national, but it's also part of the agricultural uh, activity, because we have would you, would, you, would you go as far as to say that um, the sustainability of these wine regions contributes to sort of a social element so people that work around the industry whether that's hospitality and tourism and and so on so it's yes equal. yes indeed yes indeed no and this is a say a peculiar part of the social issues uh for wine then of course if you if you think about agriculture globally there are other issues regarding social that are even more important, which is modern slavery. Yeah. In, in Tuscany and in, the, and in the wine business, we probably don't have such an issue. And, and so maybe you know, we think how to protect our land in terms of social benefit. Uh, but of course, there is also, if, if we make the picture larger and we look at modern agriculture in general, we have to think about it. Think about, in Italy, the picking of the tomato. Some, it happens sometimes now that is uh, an exploitation of uh, immigrants without the documents paid, nothing. So, of course, agriculture, sustainability and social is strictly linked. Uh, and, and, and it's worth mentioning now we have a very strict anti-modern anti slavery policy at Naked and we look for paperwork from, from various countries as well to ensure that they are certified in terms of how they take care of workers and so on. And as you mentioned, in some countries, it's perhaps more, more of a risk with regards immigrants and so on. But um, yeah, it's very, very all the way through our supply chain, anti-modern slavery is uh, an incredibly important matter for us. So that that's one of the social elements. We also, we think about, um, so from, let's say in South Africa, well, I think everybody knows uh, about Carmen's Kids feeding campaign, of which we've raised about 1.5 million pounds to date on that feeding uh, hungry school children in South Africa, which is one social element. But it also, um, some, one, one area where we balance, balance two things is um, we ship naked wines, we move transport about a quarter of all of our wines, and that's a lot of wine, uh, we transport it in bulk. So that means it goes into a big, big bag in, in a container. And this big, big bag can hold about 30,000, 32,000 bottles. So when we're transporting, for example, Rod East Old, small and small Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, which as we all know is the other side of the planet, rather than putting it into glass in New Zealand and you transport a smaller volume, but you're also carrying a heavier weight with the glass, all we do is move the liquid and we put it into bulk into this big inflatable bag, let's say in a container, ships across the world slowly. And then it comes into a bottling in Europe and then we put it into glass in Europe. And that uh, removes um, 
you know, an enormous amount of CO2 or the, 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 the tons, the carbon footprint of the wine. So that is a massive benefit. And we do that about a quarter of our wines. And the quality is still excellent. Indeed, Sebastian Saint Martin, who should have been on the call with us, alas, uh, who farms organically and biodynamically. He and other winemakers, I and the team I work with, have been pushing, pushing quality the whole time because we've decided that bulk shipment of wine is the future because we need to remove glass as much as we can. We need to transport this way. And therefore, we have to ensure that this is going to be uh, stable and, you know, just as good quality, no change at all in quality. And so we've even moved to shipping wines unfiltered, which means you keep some of the natural good stuff in there before you strip it out at the end. And his wine, his uh, reserve Malbec, both of his Malbecs, which will be going live in a few weeks. Sorry, guys, it's been, as you know, shipping all over the world has been a bit, a, a bit tricky at the moment, but it's coming in. And these wines we ship unfiltered and you taste them now coming from Argentina and the body and the richness is incredible. So that is to just share with you what we're doing from an environmental perspective around shipping wines, uh, taking the glass out to the last minute. But when you look at South Africa, and we do ship two wines in bulk out of South Africa, Bruver Shannon and Carmen's wines, two of Carmen's wines, sorry, three wines. But the rest, we've made a conscious decision not to ship wines in bulk out of South Africa. And that is because we want to keep the bottling in, we want to keep as much of the industry in South Africa so that there are jobs for labeling, bottling, buy the labels in South Africa, apply the labels. So there's there's a way off there. And, and, and that's that that just comes down to a group decision on, you know, we're doing so much for the planet in, in one sense, reducing glass weight, shipping in bulk from New Zealand, and then in communities that really need it. This is where the social element of sustainability comes into it. We decided that you no, know, we want to actually reinvest in this area. And, and as you know, they, they were hit badly the past. Well, everyone was, but certainly them, all the um, wine industry shut down and we've done a, a, re a support case there. And we've committed to future vintages for them. And this is my last piece, but that a lot, that has a lot to do with sustainability. You can, in a sense, teach a man to fish and so on. But when you give them future orders and they know that I can keep going for a while, they can plan accordingly. And that makes their business, which is the sort of other part of the pillars of the economical part of sustainability, it makes their, the economical part sustainable. So just a bit of a update on what Naked is doing amongst many things. And I should just, I saw you sneak back there and pour yourself a glass of wine, Stefano, from your boxed wine, which just went live, what, two weeks ago, I think. It's beautiful. I, well, I'm very fortunate to taste the wine. And I saw the ratings today. It's like 96% buy it again rating. Are you happy with it? Yeah, yeah. I'm tasting. I have several boxes of this to keep to, because it's something new for me too. So to understand how, how it developed with time. Yeah. So I've, I've I just take the occasion now to, to pour it a little bit. You see, it's very easy, simple. Yeah. And to try, let's say I open one every two weeks or one every month, just to understand how it goes compared to the bottle. So far, it was bottled um, three months ago already. And so far, no difference. I, I, if I taste blind the two glass together, I can I cannot find any difference so which is very good it's perfect i've been doing the same with, with yours with uh, christian patata passiamento which has gone live we've got galador reserva um uh, benjamin darno picnic which is coming down the line so there's a few we've we've actually removed 27 tons of glass from this boxed wine campaign that we've just introduced. So I think people will know that boxed wine is, is nothing brand new, but when we decided that we wanted to have our best, when we wanted to do boxed wine in order to, you know, reduce the impact on the environment, we said anything we have, we do needs to be from a world-class, top-class winemaker and the quality of the wine needs to be ace, like our, our hero wines, wines we're very proud of. And by that, we would stand by we would stand by them in a box just as we stand by them in a glass. And so that is the sort of endorsement of quality. And we're very, very strict, or I'm certainly very strict on, on the quality control here. And um, the wines have turned out fantastic. So 
um yeah that should be live on the site if anyone wants to pick that up and then we might maybe i can't give away too much but we maybe maybe might have another wine from you stefano around christmas maybe in our big christmas case but i can't tell at all that so we'll move on swiftly swiftly um and stefano so just to talk a little bit about going back we've talked about the um, the social a little bit about uh, environment or economical and so on but coming back to environmental when people when we talk about it in wine people we have organic wine you go sustainable wine and then each country does their own sort of version and interpretation of that new zealand is very very focused on that 99 percent or so high percentage are uh, registered as sustainable but when you go to organic then it's more as you said earlier the rules are the rules with organics and then you've got biodynamics so could you just for the benefit of everyone watching explain to us what is the difference what are the key let's say three if you want differences between conventional regular farming in the vineyard and organic viticulture grape growing yeah it's a conventional is the kind of agriculture that has developed in the last, say, 70 years. No? After the Second World War, the chemistry has jumped incre to incredibly high level. So, so we've developed uh, fertilizer, herbicides. So everything that has increased the yield in the, in the field. And this has brought to an incredible increase of the population in the world. In the 50s, we were 2.5 billion people. We are almost 8 billion now, so three times. Mm. And, and this already explain what is not sustainable. So this, and so say modern agriculture is based on conventional because the, the main goal was to feed this growing population. Yeah. And myself, I was, I, I was graduated in 1995. So I've been trained with this logic of improving the yield, reducing the cost. And not much attention was given to the environment. Uh, because actually, you no, know, it's uh, after the, the, the first um, petrol crisis in the mid of the 70s that we realized that the number of energy on the world were uh, limited. But till then, so which is less than 50 years ago, 40 years ago, we thought that we could grow forever and we could increase the number of population and that the number of uh, energy was, was infinite. So this is the environment for the conventional agriculture. Then uh, the organic agriculture. Okay. And sorry, Stefano, you have painted a very good picture of the history and how we came to be, yes, the importance of like regenerating uh, lives and yeah, yields, pumping up uh, production in, in, in farming so we can feed ourselves after the war. And, and now we are where we are. And, but is it by and large, you know, high volume wines that you might get in supermarkets or or anywhere it's not specifically supermarkets but it is just it's is it for rapid growth of grape vines and, and, and grapes or to just to summarize on conventional uh no i i would say that conventional for, for conventional which is the benefit at the end are you asking me what is the benefit of of conventional agriculture in one in one making or it's really to draw a line on conventional and then to explain that difference in organics or maybe maybe go ahead on to organics and then we can see a, a better uh, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah then then organic uh, start i would say the first law on organic and the first regulation on organic production dates back to the beginning of the 90s so 1992 so it's it's not that far away and why we, we came to, to that, because uh, we've had more uh, awareness of some um, chemical products made by synthesis uh, that could, could stay in the food we were eating and in the wine that we are drinking. Mm. So, because they go, they, this, this product, they go into the, into the product where we are eating. Well, if we use for organic, we use, we say only contact products. So 
essentially is copper and sulfur, they, to protect the vines from the disease, they stay only outside of the, of the vine. They are not uh, transported inside of the tissues of the plant, so they yeah. cannot get into the pulp, so not even in the juice. So that, so we, we, we started, we, we start to have evidence of this, of this residual pesticides in the wine and in the food. Uh, let's say, see, probably in the 70s and 80s. So 90s has started this, say, revolution. And what is important of organic is, of course, as I told you, it's regulated by, uh, by rules. Yeah. And uh, there, is a, there are differences between the European regulation for organic and the organic in the States, for example, and the organic in, uh, in New Zealand but more or less they are based on the same approach. So just using contact products that are not um, systemic, so they don't go into the, into the flow, the sap of, the, of, the, of any uh, plant we eat. They, they act like a, a guard, a bodyguard on the outside exactly. shield, and then they also wash off. When you get heavy rains, they will wash off, and then the vine is no longer protected. So it's like a mask in a sense, exactly. remove the mask and you're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. So, and then even in the winemaking, there are some rules that are reduced the amount of sulfur that can be used in the, uh, of sulfites that can be used in the wine. And uh, again, there you can use yeast, you can use, but many things cannot be added, like enzymes that are used in the winemaking process. You cannot use in the, in the production of an organic fruit, but and then the next step is biodynamic, both, uh, both conventional and organic uh, methods of farming are based on scientific evidence. So uh, it's, it's a mechanistic approach to the winemaking. You do in the organic without something. Then there is uh, something in, 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 in between that is Integrated Pest Management, IPM, uh, that it's a sort of reducing some products of the conventional, some, some pesticides of the conventional that are considered to be more risky for the health. Yeah. And, and this is a way in between towards the organic. And then uh, we, we also have another method, farming method, which is quite uh, known, which is biodynamic. Uh, biodynamic is very, it's a very controversial um, farming method uh, because it was um, theorized by Rudolf Steiner uh, at the beginning of the of last century. And um, it, it's very controversial controversial because there is a part of the biodynamic with, which is exoterical and, and th that is why. But at the end, um, the, the biodynamic has to do with the uh, vitality, viability, fertility, health of the soil. And, and I would say this is the first um, method developed that, that is quite developed that, that put the soil in the center of the farming method. So mm -hmm. we had to look at the soil and we forgot uh, the soil for so many year, as years, thinking that it was just a natural substrate where we have, where we could put nutri nutrients. And, and, and it's much more than this. So biodynamic has pushed the focus on this. Then, of course, there is the exoterical part, which is for me really fascinating. That has to do with the what they call the dynamization. Uh, of, um, I, I don't know how to explain, but we are not just made of uh, of chemistry. No, there is something that we cannot explain uh, with chemistry. It's, what is it's an energy between the land and the moon and, and the planets and what, what is happening there and the, the cycles of the moon, which affects the tides, of course. And so there is this pull and there's a timing in, in biodynamic viticulture, a belief that the, the a strong belief uh, that it, 
it, it they, they time it according to the moon cycles because this is when the sap is pulled up into the vine so you be careful of when you're pruning and when you're picking and the, your various treatments and then they use more natural products dandelion and nettle and they make tisans like teas which they sort of, as you said dynamize up and then spray it onto the vine so it's really it's minimal amount of, that there's like there's no copper it's, it's just it's really taking very natural products working with the with the planets and and i and i think so we've talked about conventional organic integrated integrated pest management which i think is it's fascinating that where you're using spiders in the vineyard to eat very, very caterpillars who are eating so you're just letting and this is something that frank massar in spain in, uh, he's, he's very strong pushing the flora and fauna of the vineyard so that it's alive and in fact it will protect itself if you introduce the right kind of characters into the cast um but on biodynamics as well then you, you you're you're on the most more esoterical and I, we were chatting earlier stefano and i was asking are we were thinking can you taste the difference in any of these because as you go further along you are having less of an impact on the planet and as you said uh, the soil is what really matters and provided we create and sustain a healthy soil which can absorb the carbon and just like open up the soil at, um that's that's the key thing and I taste lots and lots of wines personally, and as, as you do as well, and over the years. And that's a very topical debate about whether you can taste the difference between a conventional wine, an organic wine, a biodynamic wine. Um, I, I think the safest way to say is like, no, but then that doesn't really show your real passion and investment from my side, because I think actually, yes, I can. But in a blind tasting, could I say, oh, it's a very nice wine, Cabernet Merlot, Cabernet Merlot blend, 2016 vintage definitely biodynamic i wouldn't be able to say definitely biodynamic but when i do see two wines side by side one is one isn't from the same producer which i've done before in champagne and in various areas and i can feel the difference i can see this energy mostly in whites you feel this vitality you said earlier you do just get this pulsing uh, and persistence you get something a lot more from more so biodynamic than just organic and then in red wines you get a purity honesty clarity of fruit the, the fruit is just uh it's right there for you and 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 you know that it has sort of not been tainted in any way but that's just personal and like i said i taste an awful lot and i probably take things to the nth degree but um the main thing and we will summarize there and then take some questions but as you said stefano is our management of the soil and just if you could summarize on that, how that also relates to food. Basically, if all of us who are attending this evening, I hope you've all been enjoying it, but if we were to take it away and we go shopping on the weekend, what do we need to do outside of it? Or when we are shopping for wine, whether at Naked, what do we now know that will influence our purchasing decisions of wine or our purchasing decisions of carrots, broccoli, the next thing? No, I yeah, it's it's really it's really interesting this part. And maybe just want to remind this that you have shown a little bit before um, with the survey that was showing that twenty five percent of the uh, CO two emission was in the wine in the wine business is coming from agriculture, no? And it is exactly the same number that we have in general in our world. So our world. Uh, agriculture is responsible for 25-30% of the greenhouse gases emission. And um, so, so when I start to think about the, the project, um, I thought uh, farming method shouldn't be important for the angels uh, just because uh, you know, if we make a more sustainable farming method herbicides are not used and pesticides are not used. So it is also very important for the climate change. And uh, of course, if we change the farming method in winemaking, we won't change the world because the surface that in the world is used to produce wine, it's just mm. a drop compare. But I thought what clicked to my mind is that uh, naked wines, especially naked wines and wine in general, but naked wines, it's a perfect environment where we can bring on this uh, 
this idea of sustainability. Um, because I, I think we can use wine as an educator, wine as a model for the food. Uh, there are, or there is, to, to, to my evidence, there, there is no other food where you have such a community that at this time of the evening is yeah. talking about these subjects. No, there is no a conversation uh, around uh, wheat or soybean or, or whatever you think may be a food product. So wine can really be a model. And Naked Wines, the Society of Naked Wines can be really one of the first. So, so my, my main goal now is to interact with, with the angels to try to explain what real sustainability is, what agroecology is, what biodiversity is, what um, health of the soil is, and why soil is so important. Because it's known that there is much more carbon in the first 30 centimeters of soil than in the whole atmosphere. So if, if we could trap back down the organic matter into the soil, it really would change the climate again, that, so, that, to a yeah. good climate. Yeah. So, no. so I'm just trying to say, I will, use, uh, I will use wine as an excuse to introduce better farming methods, but then what, they, what the angels should be aware is that they should care more about what they eat because they eat food every day. And when they buy food, they can make the change. They can make the difference. So this, uh, Ray, I think is the most important part. So how can they uh, understand if what they are buying is sustainable or not? Of course, with Naked Wines, we are in advantage because they can speak with me. I am in the field. So I can tell them and show them what we are doing. Of course, when you buy uh, one kilo pasta or rice, it's not that easy, but if it's organic, if it's biodynamic, if, it's, if there is a certification of sustainability, maybe try to go in depth and try to understand if it's just a matter of greenwashing, because this is the risk and the threat now that everybody is talking about sustainability and we haven't understood exactly what it is. Yeah. So, so my um, request to the angels is really try to get deep into, the, into the, this subject because it's really important, not just because of your health, of the food you eat, but also there's a very important, can really have an impact on the planet. Very good. Thank you very much, Stefano. Shall we take a couple of questions before we wrap? Um, so this is from Alex. Two questions from Alex, if it's the same Alex. Uh, I noticed that Stefano has the boxed wine in the background, which we talked about earlier. How chilled should it be before drinking Stefano? And, uh, or is it room temperature better? Or how should it be stored? So into the fridge. The fantastic thing is that it's this size and perfectly fit the place where you generally put the milk. So, so the milk is out and the children's orange juice is out, the wine is in. Okay. The wine is in, keep it there. Yeah, warm milk and warm orange juice, but chilled fresh white wine, just what you want when you're homeschooling, <laughs> if that ever happens again. Uh, and thank you, uh, so um, Stefano, given the recent climate upheaval across Europe, what is your opinion on the effects of terroir within your region? So there are two sort of, maybe separate things they uh, yeah have i guess perhaps has the recent climatic events influenced or impacted on what would typically just be terroir which is soil environment nature uh, it's a very complex question and maybe it would uh, need more time but i'd say it is actually emphasizing the which are the best variety of your environment because for example Sangiovese if I'm thinking about uh, my region Tuscany Sangiovese is the best adapting variety because it's not it, 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 it is here since centuries so even though we had we are facing a climate change it is con 
continuously uh, doing well, while other varieties like Merlot that has been imported is an early variety. It's really suffering from the from the heat. This mm -hmm. year we've seen, you know, we've had a lot of uh, drought and uh, heat damages. So let's say it's cleaning up again uh, what the original variety should stay in the region which I'm making the terroir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, question from Vicky Vernon. Hi, Vicky. Uh, I know that Francois Hasbach's company makes wine in cans. Is this something that Naked and its winemakers could look at to reduce weight, while also making wine available in smaller quantities for those of us drinking solo? Well, Vicky, we have looked at this for a long time, actually. Um, and actually, Naked USA did cans about four years ago, three years ago. And I was following the progress of it. I was mainly following the quality control of it to ensure that, just as we discussed earlier, that any wine we put in boxed wine is equal to the, the, the quality we are we've decided stefano is going to completely contradict what i'm about to say but uh, we have decided but that's fine because you have to stand you have to think about these things very hard look into them and then stand by your decision but what i'm going to say stefano is we've decided that we don't yet fully understand or appreciate the aluminium the the the, the, the mining of aluminium and 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 unless it's 100 percent guaranteed to go back into a recycled chain actually whether those cans are a benefit or not such a benefit to the environment. Sorry, Stefano, you wanted to add something? No, no, no. I just wanted to show without showing the, the brand that we are studying it, we are thinking about it, but I exactly agree with, with Ray that the, the, what we are thinking of the box, it's a better solution. Yeah. So, yeah. But this is just to show other angels, maybe they never heard about canned wine. So this is an example. This is a, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's 250 milliliter. Yeah. And you will see it, obviously you'll see it in supermarkets, maybe even other retailers, God forbid you shop anywhere else. But um, yeah, we, we, we've looked at it. And then technically as well, you know, if it gets a little bit of a dink, a little bump, it, 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 um, it affects the oxygen transmission rate, we want to roll off the tongue. And uh, we just want to protect. So we're after quality first, well, we're after environment first, really, then quality. And, um, and so to be continued, but it's not on the agenda, Vicky, I'm so sorry. Uh, but uh, for those who are drinking solo, may I recommend our boxed wine, which keeps for three, four, five, six weeks. Yeah, a long time. Okay, Mary, uh, we'll take a few more questions. Thank you, Mary, for putting in your question here to Stefano. Do you use fertilizer? If so, what? Interested because farmers in UK are under ever increasing restrictions, even being applied to the use of organic fertilizer, i.e. livestock manure, the most natural way to improve soil structure grasses, et cetera. Do you have an answer from Mary on that? This is, yeah, this is a very, very good question. It's, uh, yes, what I'm doing, and this will be part of this, this research as well, what we have to do is to rethink about the cycle of the organic matter. So there are a lot of uh, organic matter that we are not using in our production, like the prune, the pruning, or the stems or the pomace after the pressing that we can put back into the soil. And uh, the compost is very important. So trying to reclose the cycle of the organic matter, maybe using also some menu, making the compost of all this organic, this is the best fertilizer we can use. Very good, nice one. That's closing the circle. That's a nice way of looking at it. Um, Kate has shared a question from Tim Taylor on Facebook. The question is, how do you feel about the footprint in this process? This is uh, as many need to export and does this fit with sustainability? So this, the footprint in, I'm not exactly sure which process, that question was posted at- uh, in, ge in general, in I would say there is a carbon footprint and we are going to measure it, of course, in, the, in, in our process to show what is important, but, but Ray has already given the results now in the, in the pie he, he showed us. There is, of course, but then at the end, as we said, wine, it's, it's a little product in terms of surface. So, and the, and the social aspects and historical aspects of the wine production 
shouldn't be uh, forgotten. So uh, it's it's th there will be a carbon foot footprint for bringing the wine from New Zealand to UK or from uh, Italy to 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 the uh, to the states, of course. But it's a small thing. We will try to reduce as much as possible. And Should as the example both. given from South Africa, if you if you bring away all the bottling, you also bring away part of the economy of that place. So Tuscany, the wine business is really important. is is the second sector of the economics of Tuscany after the after the the, the say the, the the farm the fashion the fashion or you know the la moda yeah, uh, you yeah. Know. the fashion yeah so, very good <laughs> no so okay. it's very important so so you, you cannot completely uh let's say uh, erase uh the wine production because it has no sense to produce a bottle of wine here and bring it on the other side of the world but okay thank you a uh, question from karen uh, are are the wines all bottled in the same EU country or is bottling distributed to several sites or countries? I think this relates back to when we ship a wine in bulk from, say, New Zealand. Yes, it all goes to Germany uh, with people we've been with since the very beginning and the quality there is excellent. So we looked at other options, whether in the UK or Spain, France, and these guys they knock it out of the park each time on quality so that we can do projects like to, to, to enhance quality, shipping wines unfiltered, doing minimum filtration on the bottom. And that all sounds a bit boring and technical, but what it means is you get more flavor, more of the good stuff is left in the wine, whereas other bottlers insist that, no, they don't want any risk. They just want to keep it low key and you sort of strip away a lot of the goodness, but we simply wouldn't have that. So it's all in Germany and um, they're good guys, friends of ours by now. Um, question from Dave I think that is does a wine box chill the same as well as in a bottle I it once it's chilled it's chilled but it will take longer to chill because it's a greater ratio although glass it's, it's much of a much as what you think Stefano because the, the the cardboard in the bag is thinner than an actual glass bottle but there's a greater volume of wine to chill yeah, down it's, so it's, it's, it's the same amount of three bottles so at, this, at the end the, the, the higher volume it takes more time but then it stays chilled for longer so you can take it out so i think you know stick it for three hours and then take it out and it'll be chilled for longer uh, okay well let's just do two more and then we wrap up uh, but uh, here's from kenneth quite a long message so bear with me everyone it would be great to go through the christmas wines how's this for an idea make a case that includes all the bottles plus a sample of each wine so that we can have a pre-tasting on Zoom before we open the bottles at Christmas. I think we had that idea in our meeting last week. Uh, we've talked about this anyway, it's a good idea. Um, of course, there will be an increased cost, but it could be an opt-in or opt-out basis. Perhaps split the session over a couple of nights in early December. Very good idea, Kenneth. And I'm pretty sure we have that up on a, what we call a jam board where you just throw up ideas. So that may happen or something similar in a similar guise to it may may happen for those that that don't want to buy the whole big in case but they can are the, the christmas case but they can follow along as we open and taste thank you very much for that uh kate again shares a question i'm guessing from facebook yet yeah, from anya ajana perhaps uh could you make all your wines vegan better for the environment what would you say to that stefano um uh, yeah, we, it's it's very easy to make a vegan wine. So at the end, uh, we 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 have to avoid we have to avoid to use any product that that comes from uh, from the animal. So for making wine, it's quite easy. Then in the more extreme vegan, you cannot use manure in the in the vineyard, and this is something I don't really understand. You cannot use you cannot use manure yeah. in vegan wines, really. In the, in the, because there are more level of vegan. So in the more extreme, manure is not allowed because it, it, it comes from the, uh, you know, the- Excrement of the cow, yeah. Yeah, and, and that and that's means that you have a place where you, what do you do with this cow? They are not free in the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, very. 
Is it really? Is that? The, I've never heard that. So is that? Is, is that? in the law of vegan certification? Because typically yes. it's in the winery and what additives you're using to, to clarify the wine or so yes, on. There, in the, there are different level of certification. So in the highest level of vegan, this is not even allowed. So, so for me, the normal vegan, say th those that is not using like gelatin or, or uh, in, the, in the fining of the wine, of course, is quite, it's easy, we can make. and. Actually, we, we have uh, most of the wines made for naked wines have already shifted into vegan because it's easy, but not the highest uh, level with, uh, you know. It's a, very, it's a very good question. Thank you for, for, for that question from Facebook. And I, one example just to share and then we'll wrap up on it is um, Sam Plunkett. I know that in Australia, he wanted to make his wines largely vegan. But he got, he was putting the blend together for, it was a Cabernet, I think. And the tannins, this is the drying bits that sort of give structure to a wine. They were quite coarse. They were quite rough on the wine. And so he, in order to solve that issue, to sort of tame the tannins, he had to use egg white. Uh, and so um, albumin. And so he, you, know, you whip up these egg whites and then that sort of color, um, coagulates, pulls together the tannins, softens them and it drops out. So although he wanted it to be vegan, he decided for the quality and the experience of the customer, he, he chose it to be vegetarian rather than vegan. So I guess it, it, in one sense, the winemaker with their best intention still has to think about the drinking experience of this. And that's where they might make last minute decisions to go, no, this is the right thing for the wine. But it's a, it's, it's a case by case. So I think we will wrap there in case I forget to say it. There is a group on the Naked Wines. You know, there's, there's many groups. When you're into your account, you can choose my groups. And there you can follow Green Wings because we have angel wings in this community. And this is Green Wings for the more environmental and sustainable side of it. So please join that group for more of these chats. Remember, uh, you will have seen Luke chatting in the, in the chat room. We are only getting started. We've been working on this for a while with regards to our bulk shipment, the boxed wine, various products. Um, but there's a lot, an awful lot more to come at Naked Wines in terms of our sustainable uh, approach. So join that group. And then Stefano, if you're not following Stefano, well, then what are you doing? And But he will uh, be posting pictures uh, around his project that we talked about earlier and also running these surveys, which he would value your contribution from a statistical relevance point of view. That would be great. Stefano thank you very much for your time and you're in middle of harvest but it's been a fascinating evening uh, we appreciate your contribution i'll keep you posted with video and everything to involve you engage you as much as possible and it's a pleasure to chat with you ray every time <laughs> yeah I, I i miss you i'll hopefully see you maybe i spoke to federico maybe I see you in november november maybe. We yeah. wait for you. We it's, uh, it's two years that you are not counting. Yeah? Exactly. Something happened. Oh. Isn't it? Yeah. Anyhow, cool. Good. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining. And uh, next week, um, Matt, the wine guy, will be chatting to. Uh, we'll be talking all things sparkling wine, sparkling Muscadet, and Paolo Secchetto from Prosecco. So make sure you don't miss that on Tuesday next week at eight p.m. All the best, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Ciao a tutti. Buonanotte dall'Italia. <laughs> Ciao.